let me ask this. I mean, would you say growing up, you know, aside from never meeting your father, would you say that you had a fairly normal childhood? No. Okay, no. what was not normal about it? Uh, lots of violence. Uh, I was molested as a, uh, as a youth. Um, what age? At, at nine. Uh, my, Who molested you? My best friend. What's up, YouTube? Atlanta Street Interviews out here with another one. Um, so we got my man out here today. How you doing today, man? I'm doing fair and cloudy <laughs> weather, I guess you could say. I guess, I, I, I get it, I get it. Um, and so are you homeless? Yes, I am. Okay. Um, how long have you been homeless? Uh, over a year. Okay, and how old are you? I'm 54. 54, all right. And so what was it that happened over a year ago that made you go from having a roof over your head to being out on the street? Chasing sex, basically. Okay. And so is that was in the form of prostitution? Yes. Okay. Um, and so why was that something that, what, was it basically finances? Basically you was um, spending all your money on, on prostitutes and... Well, no, I was, um, I was in recovery, okay? I was um, um, in a recovery home, uh, running my own business out of the recovery home. Had been celibate for about eight months. Okay, what kind of business? Um, social media marketing. Okay. And um, I um, was on the train going down to uh, a pawn shop to buy some, uh, some more tablets because, you know, I was working on uh, basically a, a website and I was trying to see how it was going to render under, you know, with a tablet versus a phone, whatever. And um, a girl was sleeping on the train and I could tell that she was, you know, one of the what we call dirty ankles, street walkers, prostitutes, whatever you want to call it. And uh, just the way that she was laying and, and the parts of her body that, that was real just kind of like really hooked me, you know? So I kind of woke her up and started talking to her. And next thing you know, um, we're basically getting high because the sex never happened. You know, it was like one of those things, you know, you thought you had a fish on the hook and it was actually turned to be a snake, but. So wait, uh, what happened? <laughs> you say that, you say that you just ended up getting high and not having sex Never with her? Never even had sex, right. Uh, she swore that she didn't get high and the next thing you know, we were getting high. And um, Getting high on what? On crack. Okay. Uh, so, so you had the crack on you? No, she did. Okay. She did. And so, um, yeah, so anyway, bottom line, I never, from that day to this day, I never made it back home. Ever, never made it back home. And so home was... Uh, at a halfway house or, or, yeah, or a two-way room and uh, board type of house? It was a, a luxury apartment in Roswell. Okay. Uh, who, my, who, and who was you living with? Some other recovering addicts. Okay. How many bedrooms was the apartment? Three bedrooms. And so it was two other guys in there with you? Right. Okay. And luxury apartment in Roswell. Right. Uh, traded that out for the streets. The streets. Huh. Never made it back. And so it's, basically the crack is what hooked you. Exactly. Like, okay okay so i mean uh, so let me ask so when was the first time how old was you the first time that you ever smoked crack uh around 21 21 okay and so what made you try crack back then at 21 well back then it was i guess you could call it free base but uh there was a lady that lived in my complex uh i was working nights and um she was modeling and so she kind of had a very you know loose schedule and it seemed like every time I would be at the pool swimming laps, she would be at the pool. So one day she and I started talking and she asked to borrow some money. And so I went to the, you know, back to the crib, laundered the money. And she came back pretty quickly, asked for some more money. I was like, wait, 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 you know, bottom line is she was buying, you know, cocaine. And so I asked her what she was doing with it. She told me and I said, hey, you know, let, let me in on it, you know, so. She let me in on it, we went and got it, we came back, she, you know, fixed it up, and, and that's how I got started. Um, that was quite a while ago, many years ago. I mean, had you heard of crack at that point, to a point where... The word crack wasn't even really a, a term Okay, so it, it was wasn't, basin, Okay, you know, so it wasn't so. like crackhead or nothing like right, that. Right, that right. That wasn't in the, the social kind of... Right, because you bought uh, powder and you cooked okay. it up, you know, to I get it. basin back then, so... Um, but no, you know, it wasn't like, you know, people were calling people crackheads. You didn't have that term. Right, before, right. You know? So it wasn't quite there yet. Right. I so, get it. I get um, it. So anyway, um, from the very first time I tried it, 
it was like immediately I went back to the ATM and withdrew, you know, two, three hundred dollars and and took off and I was out of a job in like two weeks. I mean like could not function on it, you know. Some people could function on it, I couldn't function on it. So, so did did so when did you ever did you ever like kinda at some point it sounds like you were starting to get back on your feet and I did, I did, but um the, the I guess you could say the, the the thing that the end all was in 2001, my mom died. When my mom died. I um, I went into a tailspin, and I, I can honestly say, I never completely came out of that tailspin. Mm. Never, never. Okay. I've um, I've been successful since then for short terms. I might stay clean like two to three years. I might stay clean like, you know, six months and and, and bounce back up on my feet. Um, but ultimately. I come back and, and crash again. So that's kind of like been the, the uh, revolving okay. door since since 2001. So let, let, let's start from the beginning, man. So okay, um, where are you from? From Atlanta. Okay, from the ATL. Shout out ATL. ATL. Um, what, what what part of Atlanta, man? Just I grew up on curious. the south side of Atlanta. South side. Okay. okay. Shout out south side. All right. And so um, growing up here, did you have both your mother and your father in the household? No, only my mother. I never met my father. Never met your father in life never ever. Father, ever. Okay, um, did you have any siblings? Three siblings. Okay, and where were you in the birth order? I'm the youngest son. Okay. Um, all right, and so um, did you, let me ask this, I mean, would you say growing up, you know, aside from never meeting your father, would you say that you had a fairly normal childhood? No. Okay, no. what was not normal about it? Uh, lots of violence. Uh, I was molested as a, uh, as a youth. What um, age? At, at nine. Uh, my, Who molested you? My best friend's oldest brother. Hmm. Uh, yeah. How so, old was he at the time? Uh, he was like in his early 20s, I guess. Hmm. And uh, so, yeah, he kind of... Now, how, you, you're saying molested. Are we talking full penetration? Yes. Okay. So he, he yeah. took me in the woods and kind of like put me in a toehold and just kind of, you know... Um, did what he wanted to. Did you tell someone after that? I wouldn't dare because I wanted to kill him. I didn't want nobody to know because I wanted to kill him. At the time, you know, I I had access to some guns because there was guns at our house. Uh, but unfortunately, somehow he disappeared and he's never been back to that neighborhood ever again. So uh, did you ever tell anybody? Eventually, yeah. When I found out that I wasn't gonna be able to, you know, get access to him, I, I eventually told. But um, you know, I. I wanted, to, I wanted to do some, I wanted to kill him. I wanted full revenge. I felt completely violated. How do you feel like that episode has impacted your life? Looking back on oh, it now. Oh, tremendously, a tremendously. 54 year old uh, man. Because I started like, um, inside, I was very revengeful. I became very rageous. You know, I would go into rageous fits and have fits and I started fighting all the time. I started like, you know, really not caring what I, how I hurt a person. I was just wanting to, to just. Did you ever engage have, in any homosexual activity uh, after that at any point in your life? I started hating them. I right. Hating so it them, caused you, know? you the, yeah. the exact opposite. Yeah, I started the hating rage. them. I wanted to, I wanted them all to die. You know, I started really hating uh, homosexuals. I mean, really. You know. And, you uh, feel like that came from a hatred of what? happened to you almost like a self-hatred absolutely and i and i've actually had a lot of bodily uh harm inflicted upon myself according to my therapist it was self-hatred for even allowing him to not i can't say allowing him i didn't allow him but for even being in that predicament you know for being uh, uh taken advantage of and not having the law to handle it where he got you know immediately apprehended letting him like escape and, and get away with it you know it, it I started hating myself for it, you know, and I've gone through a lot of therapy because of it. I've gone through a lot of uh, uh, psych wards and all this kind of stuff uh, because of it. Uh, it, it, it. Even to this day, it's been a very deep scar in my life. It yes. has. And uh, I just want to say to anybody that would that would treat a child like that, because I was a child, nine years old. Mm -hmm. Anybody that would treat a child like that, you're worthy of death. That's how I feel about it. You know, that's mm -hmm. just how I feel about it. Okay. Um, did you go to high school? Yes. Okay, did you graduate? No. Okay, what was the highest grade you got to? Uh, 11th grade. Okay, and so why'd you drop out in your 11th? I didn't drop out. I was um, sent to uh, YDC for um, um, robbing a store, basically, in 11th grade. Uh, came out, 
two days later, got my GED, and uh, about six weeks later, was um, uh, in attendance at DeVry University. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. And so, did you uh, graduate from DeVry? I didn't graduate. I was offered a, um, a position with a company in, in, in Cobb County. Took the sign-on bonus and, and, and went to work. So I didn't graduate. Okay. Um, have you ever been married? Yes. Okay. Twice. 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 Okay. What? Well, how old were you the first marriage? Uh, we got engaged at 18. We got married at 23. Um, we stayed married for. Uh, over 10 years. Um, for how long? We stayed together for over 10 years. We stayed together. We have three sons. Uh, we stayed together for um, about, about 17, 18 years total. So how many kids do you have total, by the way? Three. Okay. Three so sons. so all three was with the same lady? By my first wife, yes. Okay. And so you guys were together for about 17 years? 17, 18 years. Yes. And so during the time that you were dating, you say you got engaged at 18, right? Right. But you say that was also the time where you started smoking crack at 21. Right. Um, and that was with just some random lady? Right. Did your wife, uh, did your future wife, did she live at the same apartments that you're talking about? Yes. Okay. Yes, okay. And so, and so, you guys had three kids. Um, how old is the oldest? How young is the youngest? The oldest is 32. The youngest is 20. Now, yeah, okay, it's so about nine years in between right. the kids, okay. And so, what was it? I mean, that was a pretty long relationship. What was it that made that relationship dissolve? Crack, cocaine, crack, addiction. And was it just you, or was it her as well? No, she's never this woman never drank, never cursed, never smoked cigarettes. Or, or, or uh, did I she guess. did she know that you were smoking crack at the time? No, uh, eventually, yes. How long into the marriage did she find out? Uh, how about close to a year? How about a year? And but she stayed with you. It sounded like for sixteen more years. Very faithful woman. Very virtuous woman. Was there ever any infidelity? On my part, yes. Okay. What about on her part? No. Okay. And so, you guys had three kids. Um, how 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 old was the youngest child? When you guys got divorced and you moved up, he was pretty. He was very young. Uh, he was like two or three years old. Okay. And so, how is your relationship with your kids? Um, it's strange because I don't really communicate with them out here, but um, we have a deep love for each other. Um, uh, when I'm in the picture, we we have a great time together. We we communicate at a very deep level. Um, very uh, uh, heartfelt relationship. It's just that they want their dad off of drugs. Um, they want their dad back solid like he was at one time. You know, they've uh, been like my only string of hope. Of uh, when last uh, time you talked to him? I talked to my youngest son about um, about a week and a half ago. What about the oldest? The oldest I haven't talked to him in quite a while. He's uh, how in, many years? He's in well, it's been less than a year, but he's okay. in penitentiary. Okay, so he's in the pen for what? Um, well, quite a few things. Uh, some pretty um, um, serious crimes. So he's got... Uh, murder? No, not murder. But okay. Gang-related stuff, you know, uh, breaking in stuff, uh, robbing house, the home invasion type of stuff. Do you feel like if um, you would have had more of a presence in their life? Absolutely. He would not be where he's at. He was um, playing semi-pro ball and going to school when um, I went to prison. I went to prison for um, some um, financial crimes, some white collar crimes. But I, uh, what were the there, white collar crimes? Um, fraud. What'd you do? Financial frauds. Uh, Try to like um, manipulate some some accounts that weren't mine. Put it. Up. Um, but yeah, he um, was not able to talk to me. His mom wouldn't let me call and charge the calls to her account. So. How many years were you in prison? Three years. Okay. And so he wasn't able to um, talk, talk to you to during me. that critical so he time. He joined, you know, uh, uh, an affiliation, and they went on a heist, and he's not been back home since then. So how old was he when he went to prison? Uh, I think around nineteen. I think they were. And he's yeah. thirty-two now, and um, he's been in prison his whole adulthood, basically. Basically. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Yeah. 
All right, and so what about your ex-wife, the first ex-wife? How is she doing now in life? Very successful. I mean, she's um, actually plans on planning her retirement. She's been at her company for quite is a she long remarried? Time. Not remarried. Uh, she's been in a relationship with her current boyfriend for some time now, some years. Do they have uh, kids together? No. no. Okay. And so, when was the last time you talked to her? Uh, it's been some months. Does she know that you're homeless? Oh, yes. Okay. Um, do you think if she saw this video on YouTube that she would want to come and help you out and help she to get you off the street? She'd try her heart out and, and I don't know. I don't know what she'd do. Uh, it would be a great embarrassment to her and her family and to my kids. I know that. So, what, I mean, do you have any plans on trying to do anything to get off the street, I'm, man? I'm, I'm, this week, last week was the start of it. I went and got my ID back, and uh, I hadn't had an ID for months. Uh, I made some some uh, connections with some organizations that are trying to um, get me off the streets and into a hotel first, and then into a, um, an apartment from there. So um, some steps are being made to like get me off the streets and get me reconnected with some uh, some therapeutic help uh, and, and hopefully to... And so you say you've been married twice. Twice. So what, how old were you the second time you got married? Uh, 40, 47. And are you guys still married? We only stayed married for one year. One year. Mm -hmm. And so why did that marriage dissolve? Drugs. Okay, so the same reason as the first one. Same reason as the first one. And so was she on crack as well? No, she's very successful as well. <laughs> so these successful women, why are they choosing? I guess the first wife, I, I understand, you know, she got with you before you started using drugs. Right. Um, but were you clean at the moment that you started? Yes. Okay, dating the second wife? Yes. Okay, and so did she know that you had a history of drugs? Yes, she knew of the history. She couldn't even believe the history when I told her. She was like, oh, no, I can't see that. I can't see it. Because at the time, I was um, uh, director of IT for this uh, startup company. And so I was successful again and, and you know, flowing in life and, you know, looking good, smelling good, doing good. So, you know, I was an option. Uh, from that to here, you would never even associate the two. Mm. And so, so, how long into that marriage did she realize that you were using drugs? No, 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 it wasn't using drugs. I used one time, and that one time was like a, a relapse that lasted for days. And uh, I ended up having an accident and was hospitalized, and so she brought the divorce papers to the hospital. Mm. Okay. Okay. So listen, man, I mean, if, if you could go back in time, if you could hop in a time machine, mm -hmm. okay, and go back to any age that you ever was, mm -hmm. but you only had one time to do it, and you only had 30 seconds to be back in the past, okay? Mm -hmm. What age would you go to, and what would you tell yourself in those 30 seconds to try to prevent this fate that you have going on right now? Wow. I would go back to the 30 seconds before I walked down the street to my friend's house. What age first? That was nine. Okay. Um, I would go back to the to the to the the instance before I walked down the street to my friend's house and uh, knocked on the door and his oldest brother came to the door and I would tell myself then, don't go down the street, man. Just you know, go back. To the backyard and just you know play by yourself you, you know you're you're lonely just uh be okay with being alone you know and just don't go down the street seeking you know uh companionship or, or company you know just go back to the backyard and play by yourself you know and uh, i would have prevented that pain that has uh been like a a, a rivet that has riveted me to uh, anger and, and unforgiveness and, and all the things the cankers that has caused i think the greatest uh, disasters in my life mm. all right man so listen um one more if if you could tell your kids anything right now man what would you tell them that i love them okay andre Emmanuel, samuel i love y'all despite of the, the disasters and and the um, abandonment i love y'all y'all are the only reason i'm still breathing God bless y'all. Okay.
Well, listen, man, if, if anybody wanted to reach out and donate or help, uh, do you have a social media, cash app, anything like that? I do have a cash app. It's called um, dollar sign, D-R-E-T-H-E-M-E-S-S-A-G-E, -E -E, Dre the Message. Um, I do have a social media. It's uh, A West Molo. A West what? A W E S T M O R E L A. A West Molo at Facebook. Okay. All right, man. Well, listen, man, we really appreciate you taking the time, answering all of our questions. We definitely, man, wish you nothing but the best out here, okay? God bless you. All right, Thank man. You. Have a good one. Peace and love.